Whew. Today is the most important flight of my life so far. I've been reviewing airlines full time on YouTube for many years at this point. And if you've watched my videos before, this one will be a little bit different. I rarely, if ever, make videos from secondary cities, let alone the city I grew up in. Why? Because Gothenburg, the second biggest city in Sweden, does not have any long haul regularly scheduled flights. Until now. Out of nowhere, SAS announced non stop flights from Gothenburg to New York just after Christmas. And what a present that was. When I saw the announcement, I started crying, tears of joy and tears of sadness. I grew up with my dad living in his hometown, New York, while my mom raised my brother and me in Sweden. The first time I was able to visit my dad after their divorce, I was 11, and the journey to cross the Atlantic seemed so daunting. New York felt a world away. When you live in a secondary city, there are a lot of things you don't really think about until you move away from there, like the fact that you're so isolated from the world. The difference, although it seems insignificant between a non stop and a connecting flight is huge, both in terms of mental and physical stress, not to mention the massive increase in odds of something going wrong along the way. When I started visiting my dad, I'd go three times a year, four if I was lucky, usually via Frankfurt or London. I'd picture the day when maybe, just maybe, I could be like my classmates with divorced parents who spent alternating weeks with each one. And here I am, 17 years after my parents separated, 17 years after moving to Sweden, and the day has come, a day I really didn't think would happen in my lifetime. Welcome to Gothenburg Landwetter Airport, where the festivities start at check-in. Literally every single person on this flight seems to be Swedish based on the check-in line, and I'm bringing two Swedes along. Oscar and his wonderful mom, who's in for a surprise, her first ever premium cabin flight. Seeing Newark on this departure board that I've seen so many times feels unreal. And so does this ad. Ironically, the small airport in the city I grew up is one of my favorites in the world. It's small, modern, efficient, and what's this? Ready for an inaugural flight party? SAS has set up quite the little USA fan club here. Playing every song Swedish people associate with the US, serving cake which has been cut in a way that should be illegal, finger sandwiches, and of course, speeches from politicians, airport bosses, and the man himself, the CEO. After his speech, I approach him, seeing my opportunity to share my feedback with the person who's most empowered to take it on board, and I end up having a 15-minute one-on-one conversation with him. Anko is one of the nicest airline CEOs I have ever met. My conversation with him ends up being so candid and refreshing that I leave feeling deeply concerned about my objectivity and ability to criticize SAS knowing how nice he is. See, this is why I avoid all contact with airlines. After all, this flight, just like all my flights, is self funded with no airline involvement. At 6.05 p.m. ahead of our 6.30 p.m. departure, boarding begins. So the time has come after a bit of a conversation with the CEO where I shared my honest thoughts about the airline. It's time to experience the airline. SES livery has grown to become one of my favorites and it suits this stunning A321neo LR perfectly. This aircraft is becoming the backbone of many airlines' long-haul fleets on so-called thin or low-demand routes. SAS has only three, but at a price of 60 to 70 million euros each, that's still quite the investment, even when leased. Most interesting of all is the configuration, since SAS has a relatively massive premium footprint on this bad boy, with 12 premium economy seats in an incredible 2-2 layout, and 22 business class seats in an alternating layout with even-numbered rows featuring so-called throne seats, which is by far the best choices you're about to see. The only exception is for those traveling together, where row one would be the best choice, especially on overnight flights where they have the most foot space. Let's hop on board and check it out. What a stunning cabin. That is my first impression as I take in my home for the next eight hours. Economy, premium economy, and business class are all in line with what you'd expect on a wide body aircraft. Naturally, there are some massive drawbacks of being on such a small plane, which I'll get to later. What are you for Good to see you. <laughs> 
<laughs> These are the seats Oscar and his mom will be enjoying right behind me in my throne seat, which just like on Fly Dubai, shouldn't even be considered the same cabin class as the other seats. This is such an incredible product with an absurdly large amount of storage, seriously, and pretty good privacy too. Later in the flight, my neighbor finds a way to enhance the privacy even further with her tray table. There are also a bunch of seat controls on the console here, along with the headphones, which are hanging nicely, but I suspect they haven't been cleaned since Gothenburg doesn't do that type of stuff. There's also a water bottle and something really cool, a hook for your glasses. The seats behind, meanwhile, only have this storage. That's right, talk about a different experience. As we settle in and Oscar's mom takes in her first time flying anything other than economy, the crew serve a choice of water, champagne, or orange juice. They also hand out menus, which remind me of a Swedish summer sunset sky. Just beautiful. Stay tuned for a look inside. We're all so ready, so excited to go until at 6.35 p.m., the captain comes on and says there's a problem with the cabin air. Not on the inaugural. Gothenburg obviously doesn't have any SAS mechanics, so I brace myself to fly to New York tomorrow with a connection in Copenhagen. Losing out on this experience I've been waiting for my whole life. An hour later, that problem is thankfully sorted and we finally push back. 90 minutes behind schedule at 8 p.m., we lift off toward New York. so strange taking off so late and heading across the Atlantic. Even more so from a city that until today didn't have regular flights to anywhere in the Americas. One of the best things about SAS Business Class is the passengers get unlimited free high-speed Wi-Fi and let me tell you, the connection is insanely fast. I'm so impressed. Given what a big moment this is, I want to make sure NordVPN gets recognition because they are my longest running sponsor. After all these years, please don't tell me you're still connecting to airplane Wi-Fi completely exposed. There's so many things to protect against, but one of the worst is a man-in-the-middle attack, where someone who wants to steal your data can pretend to be a public network, and once you connect to it, everything you do is being directly sent to them. I know many people are concerned about Wi-Fi speed on planes. That's not a worry with NordVPN because they are the fastest in the world. Besides the security aspect, NordVPN gets you access to any content you want, no matter where you are in the world. Whether it's streaming your favorite show, browsing the web, or downloading downloading files, with almost 60 countries to choose from, you'll always be able to find fast and reliable connections. But that is not all. Get an exclusive deal on NordVPN at nordvpn.com slash nonstopdan. It's completely risk-free with their 30-day money-back guarantee. At this point, the meal service is about to start, so I quickly head to the lavatory before that. It's definitely on the small side, but thankfully bigger than on the 737 MAX. The biggest problem? There's only one for all 22 business class passengers, plus the crew, plus the pilots. This is a huge drawback compared to most wide-body aircraft. Back in my seat, the ladies of SES business class are serving hot towels. And then, pouring up SES second most served drink after champagne, their so-called apple must, basically apple cider, along with some nuts. And wow, it is so delicious. What else lies in store? Well, stay tuned for the meal service coming up next. This is our menu with a very extensive drink list and four choices of mains. I'm mainly wondering how the meal service will work with such a small galley and so many passengers. Well, it's difficult, let's just say that. An hour and a half after takeoff, cold appetizers are served. When they serve me this, I am so confused. SES has abysmal vegan food. Why am I being served meat? This is what I'm used to, but nope. SES is apparently in their plant-based era because this is soy meat with dill pearls, daikon radish, and mayo. I mean, this is creative and super impressive, not to mention beautifully presented. Just a crazy detail to add here, there are no catering facilities in Gothenburg equipped to handle this flight, so SES drives the food all the way from Copenhagen to Gothenburg ahead of this flight every morning that it operates. The crew is working as fast as they can, but the limited space really slows down the service. So it's another 45 minutes before our main course is served. Passengers can view all the food options on the trolley, which is pretty cool. Again, I can't believe what they serve me. A tempeh curry with real flavor on 
SAS? It can't be. So yummy. What happened? After that, it's another 50 minutes before dessert, at which point the impressive vegan catering stops. Oscar's mom enjoys some ice cream and says the whole meal is amazing. And I'd have to agree overall, apart from the process taking three hours in total. Would I have liked if it had been faster? Yes. Am I okay with the slow meal service on an A321 if it unlocks the ability to fly this route nonstop? Of course. I decide to work after dinner, but I'm struggling with my emotions. I keep thinking about how I'd sob uncontrollably every time I went back to Sweden as a teenager, feeling deeply depressed about the fact that my parents were and are what feels like a world apart. New York and tiny Gothenburg, two different worlds in so many ways, not least the fact that when I was younger in New York, I saw so many people like me, people who inspired me, people who were unapologetically themselves, who dared to dream while in my hometown, I as a half American was the most exotic person in my grade of 120 students making the distance seem even greater. This is the significance of a non-stop flight, sitting down in one seat to travel between two such vastly different worlds. Back to the present. I'm getting drowsy, so I unbox the adorable amenity kit. The contents are standard, yeah, the branding is pretty cool, but that's it. And we can't talk about amenities without talking about the bedding on board from Hestens. Let's see how it looks on our flatbed and bring up one problem with this seat coming up next. Ooh, that is nice. Bliss above the clouds. I've always found this pillow unbelievably flat, but the blanket is so cozy. The throne seats, although super private, have tiny foot areas, which sadly make them less than ideal for sleeping. Still, a flatbed is a flatbed and a non-stop flight is a non-stop flight. There are also, thankfully, individual air vents. I wait a little longer to sleep, thinking the sun will set soon. I mean, we took off at 8pm in April for crying out loud, but the sun doesn't want to set, apparently. I keep working as the crew pass out snacks, and the crew on today's flight is so adorable. They're all close to my mom's age and super excited. It's such a joy to get to experience the best of Swedish service, which is sadly pretty rare. Finally, sunset, a mere two hours before arrival. So much for catching some sleep. I should have chosen a nap earlier. Nonetheless, I get a little rest and wake up as the final meal service commences. This meal may not look like much, but again, it's a bigger step than man landing on the moon in terms of SAS meal improvements, at least in the plant-based department. This is tasty and nutritious, so I'm happy. I finally take this moment of darkness to peruse the in-flight entertainment system, which, while better than during the pandemic, is still pretty terrible by all measures. Bring your own content if you want decent options on SAS. While you know which city has plenty of decent entertainment, New York City, baby. is terrible, this is not LA, but as we touch down, I am overwhelmed by excitement and gratitude. Should you try to fly a wide body across the Atlantic if you can? Probably. Should you avoid a narrow body or SAS for that matter? No. This is an all around pleasant experience, flaws and all. More than anything, Gothenburg is probably one of the best places you could possibly connect flights in Europe. There are no showers in the lounges, but besides that, you have a super convenient transfer experience at a small airport from Europe to the US, which can be booked like I did using air Canada aeroplane points. So as always, how did I pay for this? This specific flight cost me just 60,000 Air Canada aeroplane points with minimal taxes and those points can be bought on the roughly bi-monthly sales that Air Canada aeroplane hosts or even easier in the US by getting any number of credit cards. What do you say about a business class ticket from New York to Europe or vice versa for about $100 in annual fees? Yeah, that's amazing. And right now you can sign up just like Oscar did to one of the best travel rewards cards in the world, which has an amazing 80,000 point sign-up bonus that is ending any day now. So if you wanna check that out and consider signing up for this bonus, those points transfer directly to Air Canada instantly. So you can book this or any number of tickets on over 60 different airlines. You might wanna consider reading more at the link below. Of course, it's free to check it out. And if you decide to sign up, please use my link. You're really supporting me. It's one of the best ways you can support me actually. Thank you so much for joining me for this very special and different and slightly emotional video. 
Until I see you all for the next one, fly safe. Mwah.